गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट एंड ट्वेंटी सेकेंड ऑफ मे ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री लेट स्टार्ट विद आवर सेशन विच इज द फर्स्ट इंडियन सिटी टू एडॉप्ट द लोकलाइजेशन ऑफ द यूनाइटेड नेशन मैंडेटेड सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स सो द चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश स्टेट मिस्टर शिवराज सिंह चौहान has recently launched the agenda for action sustainable urban transformation in bhopal city and this makes bhopal the first city in india to adopt the localization of the united nation mandated sustainable development goals fine so this is the first indian city to adopt this program fine now if we talk about different places of india that were in news these days The first one is Navegaon Tiger Reserve. So it lies in the state of Maharashtra, and why it was in news because recently it has recorded a slight rise in its tiger population. Okay. The next place is Kapileshwar Temple, and this particular temple lies in the state of Odisha. Why it was in news because. Recently Archaeological Survey of India made a significant decision to add this temple to its protected monument list right and the temple named as Tungnath temple was in news and it lies in the state of Uttarakhand fine right? then next is Bandhavgarh Tiger Reserve it was also in news these days and bandhavgarh tiger reserve lies in the state of madhya pradesh why it was in news because recently a swamp deer has been introduced here okay the next place is mana village mana village lies in the chamoli district of uttarakhand state and recently it has been renamed as india's first village that's why it was in light okay so these are the few important places that were in news and they can be asked in your examination as well next is which cyclone has hit myanmar country and is one of the strongest storms to hit the region this century this is cyclone mocha cyclone mocha was formed over the southeast bay of bengal on 11th of may and it is expected to be the second strongest cyclone to hit myanmar in a decade Basically this cyclone was one of the strongest storms to make landfall in the region this century and military have announced over 20 deaths nationwide till now okay so cyclone mocha has hit the country Myanmar and for this purpose indian government has launched an operation named as operation karuna to help myanmar country fine also few days back indian government has launched operation kaveri why to evacuate the citizens basically the indian citizens who were stuck in the country sudan right and from these evacuated citizens many people from hakki pikki tribe were saved and this is a tribe that predominantly lives in the state of karnataka right now if we talk about different cyclones first is cyclone freddy cyclone freddy has hit australian region second is cyclone gabriel it has hit the country new zealand then next is cyclone asani cyclone asani was there in andaman and nicobar islands fine next is which institution launched the 100 days 100 pays campaign so reserve bank of india has launched this 100 days 100 pays campaign by the banks recently and aim is to trace and settle top 100 unclaimed deposits of every bank in every district of the country within 100 days so what is this unclaimed deposit basically it is the one which does not see any activity like the infusion of fund withdrawal from the depositor for 10 years or more fine right? so this is the initiative of reserve bank of india also reserve bank of india has recently directed the banks 
and other regulated entities to transition away from the LIBOR means London Interbank offered rate from 1st of July. Okay, let's understand what is this LIBOR. Basically, it is a set of interest rates that is calculated from submission by the large global banks. And the global transition from LIBOR was necessitated after British financial authorities decided to phase it out in 2017 after discovering that some banks manipulated the reference rate by providing the false data. Okay. Simply, you can be asked that Reserve Bank of India has directed banks and the other entities to transition from which rate, so answer would be LIBOR, and the full form is London Interbank Offered Rate. Next is, which city is the host of the fifth edition of Global Ayurveda Festival? So the fifth edition of this festival will be held in Thiruvananthapuram this year and this event will focus on highlighting the huge potential that is provided by Ayurveda in solving the health challenges of the present world. And aim is to set a platform for global networking of Ayurveda practitioners and stakeholders. Okay, So what is the venue for the fifth edition of Global Ayurveda Festival? Answer would be Thiruvanath Puram. Now if we talk about different hosts, so uh, which city is the host for COP28? This is Dubai. Okay. Next is which country was the host for the very first China Central Asia summit? This is China country. Also, where was the summit named as Machines Can See 2023 summit? And it was hosted by the country UAE. Okay. Next is which country has been hit by a large outbreak of the Moroccan locust in the wheat plant? So the large outbreak of the Moroccan locust in the wheat basket of Afghanistan country is estimated to destroy a quarter of the annual harvest. And this loss is valued at $280 million to $480 million. Basically, this Moroccan locust eats more than 150 species of plants, including tree crops, pastures, and 50 types of food crops. And this species is ranked among the most economically damaging plant pest anywhere in the world. Fine. So currently Afghanistan has been hit by a large outbreak of the Moroccan locust in the wheat plants. Now can you tell me which European country has recently legalized euthanasia? This is Portugal. Okay. So Portugal has signed a law that has decriminalized euthanasia and now the new law allows the people who are aged 18 and above and suffering from intolerable pain and terminal illness so they can opt for this euthanasia thing right so this country is portugal and who's the current president of portugal this is marcelo rebelo de souza right next is which country conducts the soaring eagle exercise this is a regular large scale exercise which is conducted by south korean air force and recently it commenced at an air base in Cheongsu, which is one of the places in South Korea. So the exercise mobilizes more than 160 personnel and nearly 60 warplanes. That includes F-35A stealth fighters and other tanker transport aircraft. Fine. So which country is the host for this soaring eagle exercise? Answer would be South Korea. Now, which two countries conduct exercise named as Bold Kuruk Shetra? So this is the exercise between India and Singapore, right? And this year, it uh, took place in the month of March and venue was Jodhpur military station in India, right? Then talking about few more important exercises, there is this Sampriti. Sampriti is the exercise between India and Bangladesh. Then there is Mitra Shakti. Mitra Shakti is between India and Sri Lanka. Then another is Maitri. Maitri exercise is between India and Thailand. The next is Vajra Prahar. 
which prahar is the exercise between india and us also we conduct another exercise with us named as yudh abhyas right the next is nomadic elephant nomadic elephant is exercise between india and mongolia next is garur shakti garur shakti is the exercise between india and indonesia and there is shakti shakti is the exercise between india and france basically mitra shakti is between india and sri lanka only shakti is between india and france and garur shakti is between india and indonesia so do not get confused next is dr jayant v narlikar who was seen in the news recently is associated with which profession so he is an astronomer basically and why he was in news because recently he became the first recipient of asi govind swaroop lifetime achievement award okay and this award was instituted in 2022 to celebrate the golden jubilee of astronomical society of india fine so dr jayant v narlikar has been conferred with this asi govind swaroop lifetime achievement award now let's talk about important awards and honors the first name is n chandrasekharan he is the chairman of tata sons and recently he has received the highest civilian honor of the country france okay the next name is pandit ram kishan he is important because recently he has been named as man of the century at the age of 97 years and he is a socialist okay next is former chancellor angela merkel has been conferred with germany's highest order of merit fine right? now next is rebuild kerala initiative is aimed at rebuilding which entity so rebuild kerala initiative is a state government initiative the aim of which is to rebuild the roads better after flood and world bank team recently reviewed the activities under this initiative and also world bank has agreed to explore possible areas of cooperation in total six priority project okay so rebuild kerala initiative is associated with rebuilding the roads after flood okay the world's first integrated machine for manufacturing blood collection tubes husky icar has been set up in which indian state so this is the world's first integrated machine for manufacturing the blood collection tubes and recently it has been set up by cml biotech limited where in the state of kerala okay so this machine is manufactured by canada based husky technologies which is a global leader in injection molds and molding machines fine so this is the world's first integrated machine for manufacturing blood collection tubes and it has been set up in the state of kerala now all now also kerala was in news because of kerala economic revival program the aim of this program is to ensure the revival of kerala's agricultural sector through socio economic intervention and that's why world bank has proposed a funding of 165 million dollars for this project okay so you can be asked that the world bank has proposed a funding of 165 million dollars for kerala project of which indian state so answer would be kerala and what is the full form of kerala so it is kerala economic revival program next is rhythm sangwan who was seen in the news recently plays which sport so she is from india first of all and she has recently won the bronze medal in the women's 10 meter air pistol event at ISSF World Cup 2023 for rifle and the pistol shooters the venue of which is Baku in the country Azerbaijan okay so it was her first individual senior medal at the shooting world cup also she has won medals in shooting world cups and shooting championship at junior as well as senior level fine so she is associated with shooting and she was in news because she has won the bronze medal in the women's 10 meter air pistol event at the ISSF World Cup 2023 the venue for which is Baku Azerbaijan now if we talk about different sport related current affairs 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स टॉक अबाउट आईसीसी प्लेयर्स ऑफ द मंथ फॉर अप्रैल सो इन दिस इन द मेंस कैटेगरी द विनर इज फखर जमान हु इज फ्रॉम द कंट्री पाकिस्तान एंड इन द वुमेंस कैटेगरी इट इज नरवे मोल चेवई हु इज फ्रॉम द कंट्री थाईलैंड फाइन नाउ हु हैज वन द मियामी ग्रैंड प्रिक्स सो इट इज मैक्स वर्स्ट एवेंट एंड अर्लियर हु हैज वन अजर बाईजान ग्रैंड प्रिक्स सो विनर वॉज सर्जियो पैरिस यू हैव टू टेल मी मैक्स वर्स्ट एवेंट एंड सर्जियो पैरिस बिलोंग्स टू विच डिफरेंट कंट्रीज डू लेट मी नो इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन नेक्स्ट इज विच एयरपोर्ट हैज बिन रिकग्नाइज एज द वर्ल्ड मोस्ट पंक्चुअल एयरपोर्ट एज पर द रिसेंट रिपोर्ट रिलीज बाय द सी डी एम सो हैदराबाद एयरपोर्ट हैज बिन रिकग्नाइज एज द वर्ल्ड मोस्ट पंक्चुअल एयरपोर्ट एज पर द रिसेंटली रिलीज रिपोर्ट बाय एविएशन एनालिटिकल फर्म सीरियम एंड एज पर द रिपोर्ट द एयरपोर्ट हैज रिकॉर्डेड नाइनटी पॉइंट and it is the only airport in the world to cross the 90% on time performance mark fine so this is hyderabad airport and it has been declared as the world's most punctual airport as per the cdm now a few days back we have talked about the world press freedom index right in this india has been ranked at 161st position among 180 countries and which are the top 3 countries in this first is norway second is ireland and the third is denmark okay now if we talk about data governance quality index so in this ministry of ports shipping and waterways was at second position the last question is who is the first indian scientist to become the fellow of the royal society this year this is rajiv varshney He is an Indian agricultural scientist who is known for his contribution towards decoding the legumes genome and developing the new varieties of chick peas. Okay, so he is the only new Indian scientist to become the fellow of the Royal Society this year, and also he is the fourth Indian agricultural scientist to become the fellow of Royal Society. Right? So here, correct answer would be Rajiv Varshney. So these are the most important current affairs and the news from today. And now let's start with our revision session, in which we are doing the current affairs revision for the month of April. And this is ninth part in the series, in which we'll be doing the questions from one hundred twenty-one up to one hundred thirty-five. Let's start. Which country conducted the international aviation safety assessment? So this assessment was conducted recently by the Federal Aviation Administration. of us okay and it is found that india meets every international safety standard that's why it was in news so here answer would be us which armed force launched the regional pollution response exercise 2023 so recently it has been launched by indian coast guard and it examined the preparedness of the oil exploration companies to handle oil spills and marine pollution Which country has declared a drug named as xylazine as an emerging threat? This is US, and now US has declared that this powerful synthetic opioid is an emerging threat, and it is increasingly being used in illicit drugs, and now it is seen as threat due to its role in the ongoing opioid crisis. Bhatinda military station, which was seen in the news recently, is located in which Indian state? So Bhatinda military station. lies in the state of punjab and it was in news because recently four army jawans in this military station were killed which state or the union territory recently unveiled the statue of teja singh sutantar this is punjab and who is this teja singh sutantar basically he is a member of the fifth lok sabha and also he was a national revolutionary who fought for indian independence from the british colonialism so recently his statue has been unveiled by Chief Minister of Punjab, Mr. Bhagwant Man. Next is Ukraine Relief, Recovery, Reconstruction and Reform Trust Fund is associated with which institution? So, World Bank has announced two hundred million dollars in grant financing for a project that will repair Ukraine's energy infrastructure, and this will be funded through 
यूक्रेन रिलीफ रिकवरी रिकंस्ट्रक्शन एंड रिफॉर्म ट्रस्ट फंड बेसिकली इट इज अ प्लेटफॉर्म दैट अलाउज द वर्ल्ड बैंक to support the ukraine government's operation and reliefs amid the war which is stayed or the union territory hosted the fifth india uk home affairs dialogue in 2023 so fifth india uk home affairs dialogue was held recently in new delhi which is stayed or the union territory is set to launch mukhya mantri vidhva evam ekal nari awas yojana answer is himachal pradesh and under the scheme financial assistance will be provided for widows and single women to construct the houses which telescope captured the cassiopeia a supernova remnant this is james webb space telescope of nasa urja ganga pipeline is an ambitious initiative of which country so this is an ambitious project of india that seeks to take cng to far flung areas and this has helped in expanding that option of cleaner fuels to the hinterlands what is vibrio vulnificus which was seen in the news recently basically it is a rare fish <clears throat> basically it is a rare flesh eating bacteria and in the east coast of the us rising temperature has caused an increment in this bacteria dr zafrullah choudhry who passed away recently was the public health pioneer of which country So he was a war fighter and public health activist. Recently, he passed away in Dhaka at the age of 81 years. Fine. So your answer would be Bangladesh. Nisha Daya, who was seen in the news recently, play which sport? So she is a wrestler. And why she was in news? Because recently she has won a silver medal in 68 kgs category in Asian Wrestling Championships, the venue of which was Kazakhstan. Okay. When is Ambedkar Jayanti observed in India? So this day is observed every year on 14th of April to mark the birth anniversary of Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar. Also, don't forget that the birth anniversary of Dr. Bhimrao Ambedkar is being celebrated as Equality Day in the state of Tamil Nadu. Which state or the union territory launched the A Health program? So this program was launched by Uttarakhand state government, and this A Health. are the community based women activists who are involved in helping the livestock farmers to avail loans to assist veterinarians in local departmental work and more what is the full form of a help so it is accredited agent for health and extension of livestock production program fine so these are the next 15 questions from the month of april and tomorrow we will be continuing it from here that means we will cover the question from 136 up to question number 150 okay Now let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide you can see five questions which have been taken from the past two three days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions. And at the end of the lecture, do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today, and we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to GK today with this Meenu Jhatsana signing off